Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzmonk TV here, aka G Lauren33. I'm back with another video on the channel for you guys today. And today, this is my official review slash reaction for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. You guys know I like to switch it up here on the channel every once in a while and talk a little bit about the MCU because it's something I am very passionate about. So that's what we're going to do today. But before we get into uh, Doctor Strange 2, I do want to say, uh, first off, this th we will be talking spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film yet, go see it and then come back and watch the review. Two, if you guys are new to the channel, please leave a like on the video. Also, subscribe by hitting the bell right next to my name, Fitzmunk TV, and the big red button. So you guys don't miss out on any future uh, videos, releases, all of that good stuff. And yeah, let's not waste any time, right? Sit back, relax, you know, let me know in the comment section what you guys thought of the film, and let's have a good time. <sighs> Take a nice little sip of water. But let's get into it. So, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange 2, whatever you want to call it. This was a very, very hyped film. It has been basically since the announcement of this film. You know, way back a couple of years ago after Avengers Endgame. Remember when they were announcing a bunch of the Phase 4 projects and movies, right? You know, when they first revealed that title card, right? Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. People were getting hyped because we were going to dive deep into the multiverse. And the way Marvel has gone about the multiverse, they've, they've taken steps here and there. But they've also at times been very, very, you know, slow to dive into the multiverse because it's so vast. There's so much that they can do, right? Uh, in the last year when we've had the Loki TV show and, of course, Spider-Man No Way Home, right? And now with Doctor Strange 2, you, they've spent a lot more time in the multiverse. But I still feel like they're lacking something, you know? And that's my main problem with this film. This is a really, really good film. I really enjoyed it. But I expected a little more madness. Pun intended. You know, I expected a little more madness. And we'll get into more of that. So one thing I like to do before, you know, watching an MCU film, I like to go back on Disney Plus or wherever. And I like to watch, you know, some previous projects that can get me hyped. Uh, for the film. So uh, earlier this week. I watched Doctor Strange 1 uh, again. And it was the first time I had seen the film. Uh, in a while. In a couple years to be honest. And I forgot how good uh, that film is. And now at this point. You know we've had. Uh, close to 30 MCU movies. I'm not even counting TV shows. Or what if and everything else. In, in terms of just movies. We've had close to 30 MCU movies. And the way I go about it is if you're in the top 15, you're one of the best MCU films. You know, of course, there's a difference between the top five and the top 10 and the top 15. But I believe that if you're in that top 15 range, you're one of the best MCU films ever. You know, I can watch you at any time, any day, and then sit back and have a fantastic time. You know, if you're below that 15 range, I can watch you, but, you know... It might be more casually, you know. So uh, after rewatching Doctor Strange 1, I went back to my MCU list. And right now I currently have it ranked at 15. You know, that's just my opinion. It's subjective, right? There's going to be some people that have Doctor Strange in the top 10. You know, I love Doctor Strange 1. I love that movie. You know, it's just hard for me to rank it above the other 14 films ahead of it. And I love all of those movies. So let me give you an update on my list. Before Multiverse of Madness, right? So, Avengers Endgame at 1, Avengers Infinity War at 2, Spider-Man No Way Home at 3. I feel like most people have, you know, some combination of those three movies in their top three, right? Uh, Captain America Civil War at 4, Black Panther at 5, Avengers 1 at 6. I love Avengers 1. Uh, Captain America The Winter Soldier at 7, Iron Man 1 at 8, uh, Age of Ultron 9, Thor Ragnarok's at 10, Spider-Man Homecoming at 11, Black Widow at number 12, Iron Man 3 at number 13, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home at 14, Doctor Strange at 15. That's the way, that's my list. You're not going to have the same list as me, you know, uh, but that's just my personal preference. 
So going in the Multiverse of Madness, and even after seeing the film, I needed to take a couple days, because uh, I'm recording this on Sunday. I saw the film Thursday night. I needed a couple days just to sit back and think about what I had just watched. And I, I definitely, I will say definitely without, you know, any doubt, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is better than the first Doctor Strange. You know, it is, you know. But then just ranking it, it's just kind of tough. Kind of tough. Because I, you know, I have it right now, you know, somewhere around that 10, 11 range. I'm trying to figure out, and I think I need to see it again, you know, is Multiverse of Madness, uh, Multiverse of Madness better than Thor Ragnarok or Homecoming? It might be, you know, uh, but that's where I'm thinking. I'm thinking of having around that 10, 11 range, which is solid, you know. I thought... Going into the movie, there was no doubt it was going to be top 10. But like I said, I need to see it again to really, you know, figure out what I think about this film. All right. It's a good film, but it was just a little disappointing in some aspects. And we're going to get in. We're going to dive deep into that in just a second. But Right now, you know, I'm thinking about having around that 10, 11 range when I look at the best MCU films. And the thing about it is when I read the non-spoiler reviews after the premiere on Tuesday, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, basically, all the fil- uh, your reviews were saying the same thing. You know, this is Marvel's first horror film, right? Uh, and it's a uh, great film, but none of those reviews said anything about it being one of the best MCU films. None of them said it. You know, it said, of course, maybe, you know, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen, you know, deserve uh, uh, Oscar nominees, and I kind of agree with that because both those two characters alone were amazing in this film but as a as you know when you bring it all together it's not one of the best mcu films of all time right uh one thing the first thing i would say my first major criticism of this film is that i wish it was longer i wish it was longer. when i went back and watched the first doctor strange this week it was less than two hours it was about an hour 56 if i remember correctly it's a short mcu film and so is this one. This one is two hours, six minutes, tops. And, you know, when I first saw it, this film flew by, flew by. You know, uh, I kept looking at my Apple Watch. I was like, geez, because I knew going into the film, it was going to be about two hours long. Right. But this, it just flew by. And it wasn't, I wasn't bored or anything, but I don't think I've ever watched an MCU film in theaters and felt the film went by that fast. You know, I know we live in this era of movies where people are uh, making longer films, right? Of course, Avengers Endgame was close to three hours, right? You know, Spider-Man No Way Home was what, close to two and a half hours, right? This was a film with all the hype going into it I definitely thought this was a film that needed to be a little bit longer, you know, around that two hour, 30 minute mark, at least, right? Multiverse of Madness, you know, this film was, it flew by and it was a great film, but I felt like it did need to be longer to include more of that madness, right? Because, you know, even though it is the Multiverse of Madness and there's, you know, there's cool cameos and surprises here and there. You know, I expected a little bit more on the madness front, right? You know, I thought this would be the film that would really, you know, make the multiverse explode, especially with all the rumored cameos and appearances we were going to get or or we were, you know, kind of expecting, right? You know, Loki kind of opened up. Well, Endgame started the multiverse in a way, but Loki kind of opened that up a little bit more with the TVA and then... Um, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, you know, bringing in the, the three Spider-Man and everything they did with that film opened things up even more. And I expected this to be the film where things absolutely exploded, right? We we know that when we eventually get Avengers 5 here in a couple of years, right? You know, we're probably going to get Secret Wars and then, you know, we're, we know they're building towards Galactus and Kane the Conqueror and things like that. So I expected, you know, a lot of that setup to start beginning here. You know, and, you know, yes, they took steps to expand the multiverse a lot in this film, but I expected things to really explode here, and they didn't. You know, 
Uh, and that was a little bit disappointing. Uh, the plot. You saw the plot here. And one thing I always say when I go see a uh, MCU film is, you know, I always say, fuck Kevin Foggy, right? Because, you you know, what are the expectations in around an hour, an hour and a half into the film, right? That's where Kevin Foggy, you know, starts messing with your brain. You know, whatever you expected going into that film, that's where Kevin Foggy always turns things on his, uh, you know, on its head. And then that's where you get all the crazy surprises. The plot goes crazy. You know, that's kind of a staple with MCU films now, right? Going into this film, I remember asking my friend Nate, who was saying, who we, we always watch MCU films together in theaters. Uh, I, I asked him, I was like, who was the villain of this film? Or who, you know, because in the teaser trailers and everything, like, it didn't reveal anything, you know? So I was asking uh, Nate, like, who's the villain of this film supposed to be? And he was like, I honestly don't know. I think they're keeping us a surprise. 10, 15 minutes into the film, they reveal uh, Scarlet Witch as the villain. And I'm just saying, oh, wow. I'm, I'm sitting there like, holy moly. You know, Kevin Foggy, he's not going to make his way to an hour to mess with our brains. He's going to do it within the first 15, 20 minutes. And I'm just like, like, seriously, you know? And it was crazy because the plot of this film is not super sophisticated. It's not that compl- complex. But uh, but the easiness that, you know, they made it so easy to turn, you know, uh, Scarlet Witch from a hero into a villain in this film. It was like, wow. Because remember, this is somebody you've been watching since, you know, Age of Ultron. You know, how many MCU, MCU films have you been in now? You know? Uh, Age of Ultron, Civil War, Infinity War, Ed Gabe, you know, uh, WandaVision. I don't think I'm forgetting anything about this film. This is, you know, she's been in six projects now. And she's been a hero, you know. She's had her struggles, of course, but she's been a hero all the way through for the most part. And then they really, just the, the ease that they were able to turn her into a villain, it was just like, you know, I was like, come on. Fuck Kevin Foggy, like, jeez, you know? And then I was just thinking, when you go back to the teaser trailers, I did, you know, uh, you know, wanted to talk to Dr. Strange about, you know, it's not fair. When I do something, I get paid as a villain. That should have been your hint right there that she was going to be the villain of the fair, uh, of the film. But thing is, like, I didn't expect uh, Foggy to turn her into a villain so easily. To the point where there was people in my theater that wanted to see her die. You know, they were like, fuck Wanda. You know, and I was like, damn. This is somebody you 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 were cheering on, you know, when she was going up against Thanos. Now you want her to be killed. It's it's crazy. Uh, So the plot is not that, in, you know, sophisticated. It's a, it's a pretty easy plot to follow, right? You know, America Chavez shows up with this power to travel the multiverse, you know, and uh, Doctor Strange has to protect her from uh, Wanda, and that leads to stuff going crazy. That's really the plot in just a couple sentences. But still, the easiness, uh, or the ease—sorry, I'm using the wrong word—the ease that they were able to make Wanda the villain here. That's what really, you know, hit me. It wasn't like the plot was, you know, this crazy story because it wasn't. It was just, you know, how easy, you know, uh, Foggy was able to turn Wanda to a vision, uh, a villain. It was like. Wow, you know. Um, next thing I would say, the theme of this film, right? The theme, uh, it's a horror film. This is a horror film. It's different from uh, every MCU project or movie that came before it, right? You know, Sam Raimi. You know, yes, people think of Spider Man when they think of him, but you know, he's a horror guy at you know at heart. And this is a horror film. There are jump scares. There is uh, there's bloody kills. You, you know, there's a lot of you know craziness that happens here, and yeah, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. You know, there was parts where I was just sitting there like, "Dang, this is really gruesome," you know. And that was spotlight when I read the non-spoiler reviews. So, uh, I gotta give Sam Raimi credit. You know, this was a enjoyable horror film. It's so it's different. It's not like you know, you know, your typical action-filled MCU films. 
I don't think it makes sense because this is Doctor Strange. You know, with all his magical powers and the multiverse, you know, you're not going to get, you know, these crazy action-packed, you know, ridiculous battles. I, so I, I like the dark tone of this film and the horror style it is. And, you know, it, I, I, it was enjoyable to me. I really did enjoy it. Um, the visuals are great. This is a CGI heavy film. You know, of course, you know, that, you know, exploring the multiverse they had to try to bring that to life here and you know there's cgi everywhere green screens all that stuff man you know so this is a heavy heavy cgi film but the visuals are you know pretty spectacular you know i i love the way this film works i always uh have an appreciation for visuals uh and for actors and actresses because you know like most of the time when they're acting, you know, they're acting in front of a green screen, you know, and when you're watching a film, you forget that sometimes. I, I, I always think about, you know, how much goes into acting some of these scenes, knowing that, you know, a lot of the work is done on a computer after the fact. But uh, the visuals in this film are beautiful. Some of the most beautiful, you know, visuals we've gotten in the MCU so far up to this point. That also goes with the music. The music uh, in this film is really, really good. It goes with the horror and dark uh, tone of the film. Uh, easily, you know, when you think of music, I think a lot of people are going to think about that uh, that scene near the end with Doctor Strange fighting Sinister Strange. And then, you know, the music notes on the screen legit depicting the action as it happened. It was so, so cool. That was, you know, that part of the film was amazing. But the music as a whole was r r great. You know, I loved how we, the first time we see Wanda in the film, they're playing the Wanda visit theme, you know, in the background. I, I love that. I love that. So the music was, uh, uh, the music was great. Um, now let's get into more of the, the specifics here, right? Because, you know, I want I want the first part of this just to be me talking about some of the, you know, the normal elements of the film, like the music, you know, the plot, you know, the visuals, stuff like that. Now let's talk more about the specifics. And I'm going to spend some time talking about uh, the cameos and each character that we saw, right? And then at near the end here, we'll talk about what this means for the future of the MCU, right? So first thing I will say, the cameos. There was a lot of people that were rumored to be in this film. And one of the things that's keeping this from being higher on my list personally is that some of the cameos were disappointing. You know, I expected more, you know. Yes, yeah, I was never really expecting uh, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man to show up, especially when we had just saw them in uh, No Way Hope. They are referenced in the film. Doctor Strange talks about, you know, early in the film we talked about we just had a situation with Spider-Man. They don't say Peter Parker because remember, you know, no one knows who Peter Parker is. Peter Parker doesn't exist anymore. You know, no one knows because remember, they chose to erase Peter Parker's memory from the entire world. Now he's just known as Spider-Man, right? So, uh, I was expecting, you know, to see... You know, Toby McGuire and Garfield in there, even though it would have been amazing, but I, I wasn't expecting that. But we did, there were so many cameos that were rumored to be in this film for, for months and months and months, and we really didn't get that many cameos, you know, and that's what disappointed. When I looked at Multiversal Madness, I expected, you know, characters from every single dimension to show up. And, but, you know, we didn't get that here. We didn't get that at all. Uh, like, <laughs> One of the funniest ones, like, you know, Tom Cruise showing up as Iron Man. I almost thought, that, like, for real, I was like, this, it was talked about so much. I was like, they, they got to do it, right? They didn't do it, you know. Uh, and I thought we would at least kind of see almost one different variant of all the main MCU characters. I thought we would see an Iron Man variant. Uh, I thought we would see a Hulk variant. I thought we would see maybe a Thor variant. You know, and some other characters like that. We didn't. We didn't. You know, we didn't get as many cameras as we expected. And that was a little bit disappointing. You know, I don't know what 
Marvel's just saving a bunch of these cameos for future projects, like potentially Avengers 5. Uh, I say this all the time. Uh, the mo- or the MCU is so vast, right? There's so many heroes from so many different corners of the MCU now, and they're introducing more and more and more in the future, like with X-Men and Deadpool finally coming, you know, and the Fantastic Four and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? When we do get to Avengers 5, I just don't know how you could be able to fit all those characters on screen. I just don't. We 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 think about Infinity War and Endgame, how they were able to fit all those characters on screen and how much of a challenge that was. But, you know, uh, with the way Marvel's going and it, the way they keep introducing all these different characters, I just have no clue how they're going to just fill uh, and find, you know, screen time for all these characters when the time does come for Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. But, you know, maybe they're saving some of those cameos that we expected for Secret Wars and, you know, whatever is coming next. But I don't know. But altogether, I was a little disappointed that we didn't get, you know, more cameos here. You know, so my two big criticisms were uh, the length of the film. Yeah, I expected it to be a little bit longer and more cameos, but still. So moving more into the character aspect, right? I'm going to go through some of these characters. I'm going to try to do this quickly because I don't want to make this a super long, you know, podcast. But uh, I'm going to go through some of the the main characters of this film and how uh, I thought their performances were and what this potentially sets up for them going into the future. So we'll start with the, you know, the uh, lead actor here, right? Uh, Kyle character, Doctor Strange, played by uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. He was great in this film. He was fantastic, and I don't know. I want you guys in the comments section to let me know what you guys think. Uh, definitely, he's been set up uh, to be one of the faces now of the MCU. I don't want to go as far to say he is now the Iron Man of the MCU. Uh, he's close, right? He's close, uh, but he's not like the face of the MCU like you know Tony Stark. Uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark slash Iron Man was uh, in the first three phases. He he uh, He's definitely, when you think of the current slot of MCU characters, right, you think of probably Thor, you think of Doctor Strange, you think of Spider-Man. He definitely, when it comes to being the most powerful and being the faces, right, yes, he's right up there. But as the is he now the sole face of the MCU? Uh, I don't think so. I, I still... I uh, think he has a little more to go still, He, but he was great. He was great uh, in this film. You know, these last couple films in No Way Home, he was a mentor uh, to Peter Parker. He was a mentor to American Chavez in this film, right? And it's been, it's been you know, really enjoyable to see his journey, uh, from, especially, you know, after re-watching Doctor Strange 1 earlier this week, seeing where he started as that arrogant doctor who only cared about himself, really, right, to, you know... Uh, caring about others, and then seeing that go all the way to Thor, uh, Thor Ragnarok, and then Infinity War and Endgame, and the sacrifices, you know, and then, you know, the end of uh, Far From Home, or not Far From Home, No Way Home, you know, when he didn't want to make that spell to have Peter Parker erased um, from everyone's memory, but he knew he had to do it. Like, truly, deep down, he loved Peter. You know, he loved him as a hero, he loved him as a person. But uh, he realized he had to do that for the greater good. Uh, and now just looking back at it, it's just like, you know, yes, you erased Peter Parker from everybody's memory. And we know why they did it, but still wasn't necessary, really. You know, because the multiverse, I still think multiverse of madness happened even without the events of uh, of No Way Home, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, Scarlet Witch, uh, she was still using the dark hold. That was never gonna stop her. And Doctor Strange knew she was, you know, uh, of the dark hold. She knew what she did, uh, what she did in WandaVision, right? You know, uh, so I, I feel like the events of this film probably still happened even without, uh, No Way Home. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, correct me in the comment section. But that's the way I, that's the way I, I feel. But, you know, uh, he's uh, but Doctor Strange has taken a lot of strides in these last couple films. 
and definitely, you know, he's one of the most intelligent uh, characters in the MCU, right? He's in, he's he's funny, he's entertaining, you know, and he's definitely one of the faces of the MCU. I just don't think he is the face of the MCU, at least not yet. I, I not yet, you know. Uh, and we'll see where they go because I believe Benedict Cumberbatch isn't even on. I don't think he's under contract for another MCU film. I expect him to resign, of course. You know, I we, we know he'll be the he'll probably get a third movie at some point. Uh, definitely, we expect him to play a huge role in Avengers Five, right? Uh, uh, I just don't think he's the face of the MCU. I still think after the sacrifice of Tony Stark in Avengers Endgame, they're still trying to f figure out who they want to be the face of. Uh, the MCU going forward. And Dr. Strange, he still, he could be it. He could be an I wouldn't have a problem with it. But I don't think he's there yet. Uh, but he is fantastic in this film. One of the things they, uh, they explore with him is, is he happy? Right? Is he happy? Because, you know, he has this power to do basically whatever he wants. Right? And, uh, you know, his, his job is to protect our reality. His job is to protect the earth protect the reality, protect the multiverse as best he can. And in exploring the multiverse, right, he encounters different versions of himself, different versions of Doctor Strange. And then, uh, you know, uh, the question arises, you know, with all your power, with everything, are you happy? And at the end of the day, he's not happy yet, right? Because, you know, he's still fighting his feelings for, uh, for Christine, right? Still fighting uh, his feelings for Christine, you know, along with his uh, his responsibility of, you know, protecting the multiverse uh, and all these other things, you know. But he does take steps to hopefully, you know, become happy potentially in, you know, Doctor Strange 3 or other future projects, right? And I love how they really do set up, you know, Doctor Strange because you can make an argument he didn't do the right thing in No Way Home. But he does do the right thing here in this movie, right? And I think those experiences of traveling the multiverse and, you know, encountering other versions of himself, you know, really helps him to understand what his role is in his universe and how he can be a good person, not only for his universe, but for the multiverse as well. So I, I really do like what they did uh, with, uh, with uh, Doctor Strange in this film. Really did enjoy that. And it sets him up for a uh, very exciting MCU feature, future, wherever they want to go with it. Uh, we'll move into Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen. And like I said earlier, I, I feel like both uh, Olsen and Cumberbatch both gave Oscar performances in this film. Really. Like I said earlier, the ease that they were able to make Wanda into a villain here it's insane, really. It's crazy. It felt really easy how they were able to make her into a villain. And she really adapted that role. And she believes, you know, what she was doing was right. But at the end of the day, you know, she fell so deep into the dark hold that basically she let it control her. And then she has to be taught that painful lesson at the end of the film that, you know, uh, what she wanted most she was the most dangerous too. All she wanted was to find another reality where she could be with her kids, right? Be with her family, even though she made them up, made them up with magic. She wanted to find that reality that she could spend with her kids, but she was a threat to her kids, and she doesn't realize that until the end of the film. That scene at the end where, uh, uh, where her kids are like crying they're like don't hurt us and she's like i would never hurt you you know it's then that she realizes that dang i'm doing all this to be with my family but i'm a threat to them i'm actually gonna hurt them if i keep going down this path right and then that scene with the other wanda when she's like they will be loved that 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 hit deep that hit deep because you know Wanda causes a lot of pain to a lot of people in this film. She kills a lot of people, right? And then, you know, for her to finally kind of learn her lesson here at the end in that painful way, it hit deep because, you know, it makes you think, what would you do 
to be with the ones you love, right? What would you do to protect your family? And can we sometimes get, you know, can we sometimes focus so much on having one thing that we cause harm to other people around us just to get that one thing? I love how that was kind of expressed and shown in Wanda in this film. She was great as the villain, right? And the thing about it is, at the end here, and this is very, very controversial, uh, at the end, you know, they get back to their main universe, and she tells uh, Strange, I have to destroy the Dark Code so that nobody can ever, you know, uh, fall down this path again. She doesn't want anybody to make her mistake again, right? Because the Dark Code, the deeper you get into that power, the more it can control you and cause you to do bad things. So she destroys it at the end. She destroys the sanctuary and everything, right? And it's presumed that she kills herself in the process, right? Even though I, I was sitting there when that happened, I didn't cry. I didn't get angry. I just sat there like dumb. I was like, wait, what? They're like, is this how we're ending Wanda's journey? I don't, I don't think many people expected Wanda to die in this film, you know? Uh... And I can make a whole nother video just talking about Wanda in this film alone, right? Wanda, so it's presumed that she kills herself. We see she, like, as the sanctuary is, uh, you know, being destroyed, uh, we see a rock land on top of her, and uh, that's that, you know? So it's, they presume that she kills herself, but you don't really see her die. You just see the rock fall on her, and, you know, that's it, right? If Wanda wanted to save herself, she could have easily, she could have easily destroyed that thing for her without killing herself, you know? Uh, and the thing about it is, in the multiverse, right? I was about to say Dragon Ball, but in the multiverse, can anybody really be dead? So, coming out of this, I'm thinking of a couple things. One, if the MCU version of Wanda is dead, I don't think this is the end for the Scarlet Witch. Right, it may be the end of this version of Scarlet Witch, right? The one that we've gotten into known since Age of Ultron. But I could easily see something happening when we get to a future film or Avengers 5 where uh, Scarlet Witch uh, from another uh, universe shows up. I would not be surprised if it's the Scarlet Witch that we saw confront our Scarlet Witch at the end of the film, the one that told uh, Wanda. Uh, your kids will be loved. I could, you know, because this one seems just to be a loving mother. She's not influenced by the dark hold or anything like that. All she really cares about is her kids, right? I could see this Wanda maybe potentially showing up in the future and then, you know, uh, maybe through the multiverse, right, with her powers, she shows up in our universe and then uh, she helps the Avengers in their fight against Kang and, you know, Galactus and all that. I could see that happening. I could also see something else happening where Wanda does, you know, show up later in the future and she's not dead. She didn't kill herself, right? You know, she was actually able to survive or she transported herself right before or whatever. But, you know, I could see her showing up. The thing about it is, what's crazy to me is after WandaVision, I think we all were waiting to see. Uh, the, you know, the main MCU Wanda interact with White Vision. We have not seen White Vision since WandaVision. And we have no idea really what she's doing. I remember telling Nate in the theater that I expect White Vision to show up in this film. But he doesn't. He doesn't at all. Even though he has all of his memories, right? And, you know, uh, his relationship with Wanda before the end of Infinity War. Even though he has all those memories, he doesn't show up at all. And I was really surprised. I was like, okay, so what are we doing with Vision? What's the plan? You know, uh, are they just gonna, is he just going to be by himself, you know, until Avengers 5? Like, what's the plan here? You know, so I don't know. So that that's something that could happen. Yeah, I, but yeah, I do think it's one of two things. Either they're going to bring in a, a Scarlet Witch from another uh, universe, like one of the uh, Scarlet Witches we saw, or one of the Wandas that we saw uh, in this film, or 
the main MCU Scarlet Witch did survive and we'll see her return in the future. That's what I th- uh, I think. Um, and, you know, some people have made the argument that, oh, they killed Wanda because she was too powerful. And I do think, you know, for those who have seen this film, I do think without a shadow of a doubt, this film does establish that Wanda is the strongest Avenger. She does some insane stuff in this film. Right. And a lot of us thought this after Endgame when she was taking on Thanos by herself. But after WandaVision and especially with what she does in this movie, the way she does, casually travels the multiverse and kills so many people effortlessly, right? I do think that this without a shadow of a doubt proves that, you know, Wanda uh, is, was, whatever word you want to use, uh, that she was the strongest Avenger in the main MCU timeline. Stronger than Captain Marvel, stronger than Thor, stronger than all of them, okay? And, but yeah, oh, she is something. Uh, but I do think, what you know, uh, Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maxwell, she will be back. Which version of her will she return as? That, well, I think, will be determined in a future project. But I do expect to see uh, Wanda Maximoff back in the future. Like, come on. After you just spent one, it, it legit. In WandaVision, most of that film or most of that series is about her becoming the Scarlet Witch. Unlocking her true powers, right? And then what? After one film here, uh, she's gone and that's it? No, I I, I I expect Wanda uh to uh to return at some point. I don't know when that will be, right? But I do expect her to come back uh sooner rather than later. Uh yeah, so um some of the other characters here, like uh American Chavez, uh I forgot how to pronounce her real name, uh Zochi Gomez, right? See, I forget how young she is. You know, because I remember I was watching, I was like, if this is an adult really just playing a 60 year old she deserves an oscar so that's because she was playing a 60 year old so well but i went up and searched up and zosi gomez is truly 16 i was like wow you know uh you know so she does a really good job of really uh playing that young kid in that film or in this film and i i, I you know and she has a bright future as well. She's trained to become a sorcerer, right, with Wong and Karma Taj. Um, so we'll see. And then with her power to uh, the travel in the multiverse, that's going to be huge going forward. I definitely think it will attract other villains and other threats to her, right? You know, King the Conqueror, Galactus, things of that nature. Definitely, I think she will be a target in future films as people are going to want to take her power. But... But having her, and especially now that she's learning to master that ability to travel in the multiverse, right? That's definitely going to be a big thing for our heroes going forward. Like, what if they're going up against an enemy and they need to find a hero or find something from another universe? Now, as long as they have America uh, Chavez on their side, right? That's going to be very, very valuable. Be able to travel the multiverse really at any time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Wong, better than Wong, as Wong, he's great, you know, as always, you know, Wong's one of my favorites, you know, he's done a lot in Phase 4, right, he was in Shang-Chi, he was in Spider-Man, uh, No Way Home, right, and then now in this film, you know, Wong was great, Wong was great, and you have to remind yourself, he is actually the, you know, technically he is the Sorcerer Supreme, even though we all believe Doctor Strange is stronger, but still, Wong was great, uh, in this film. Uh, really, uh, the big cameos that we got, and it's so it's it's disappointing, right? But uh, we had John Kransky playing Reed Richards, right, from the Fantastic Four. We had uh, Black Bolt. We had uh, Lasana Lynch playing or reprising her role as Maria Rambeau from Captain Marvel. You know, remember in in uh, in the main MCU timeline, she was a pilot, right? Uh, but uh, in this film from the universe they go to, she is Captain Marvel. And I got to say this, Lysana Lynch, why do, I, I don't care if people think this is a hot take or not. Why does Lysana Lynch play 
a better version of uh why is she better as Captain Marvel than Brie Larson? I'm sorry, I'm just being honest with you guys. Uh, I like and the thing is Lazana List doesn't have a ton of screen time in here because Wanda destroys the Illuminati pretty damn easily. Uh but still I think Lazana Lynch as Captain Marvel, she's better than Brie Larson. She brings way more charisma and personality to the character. Sorry that I'm being honest here, but that's just the way I see it. When Brie Larson brings personality and character and stops being so vanilla as Captain Marvel, you know, that's when people will enjoy her a lot more. But until that day comes, that's just my uh, that's my honest <laughs> that's my honest thoughts on uh Captain Marvel. You know, Lizana Lynch as Maria Rambeau as Captain Marvel here. Uh she's great. She's great. Uh but uh definitely and of course, yes, Patrick Stewart uh, coming back as Professor X. Uh Patrick Stewart's one of my favorite actors. Like I, I love I love Patrick Stewart. You know, and for him to be eighty one and still doing what he does, the the guy is a national treasure. You know? And yes, uh in this film he's great. He tries to save uh the other version of Wanda, the good Wanda, right? Uh from the bad Wanda, but you know, Wanda's uh the bad or bad Wanda or main MCU Wanda catches up to him and like slits his throat in a pretty graphic scene. But still it was great seeing him uh and he delivers some really, really great lines. He's like, Let's see what Doctor Strange you really are. And there's a scene in this film where the Illuminati uh they in their universe, right? Doctor Strange is kind of he's a hero. He has a statue of himself as he's the one that defeated Thanos, right? We know in our timeline, in the main MCU timeline, that was Tony Stark, that was Iron Man, but it was Doctor Strange. But it was revealed to us in this film that, you know, the Illuminati had to make a decision because Strange told him to make a decision. Uh because actually, Doctor Strange puts everybody in danger in that film. You know, he makes some bad decisions, and the Illuminati are forced to stop him. Then, you know, Black Bolt actually has to kill Doctor Strange here. And it's funny, you see, like, uh, there's a funny moment there on Titan. You can see Thanos' dead body on the right hand. But uh, Black Bolt has to kill Doctor Strange, and then uh, to kind of cover things up in a way. Uh, the Illuminati made the decision to make Doctor Strange a hero in that universe. Even though everyone, you know, the Illuminati knew that he made some questionable decisions, right? So I, I, I did like that, even though Professor X knew that uh, the Doctor Strange in their universe, the guy wasn't, you know, the guy made some very, you know, iffy decisions. He still had enough faith in the main MCU Doctor Strange to give him a chance. And Doctor Strange does deliver. He does deliver. Uh, and, of course, my favorite cameo in this film was Haley Atwell showing up as Captain Carter, right? She has the shields. She has jetpacks and everything. I just hated how easy uh, they killed her. You know, like, she, she was actually holding her own against... Uh, Wanda, and then she even gives the, oh, I can do this all day line, right? What's got a huge pop in my theater. Um, but still, uh, I was just mad because she, she, uh, she says I can do this all day. 30 seconds later, uh, Wanda catches the shield, right? She catches the shield, throws it back at, uh, Peggy, and then, you know, it, uh, goes right through her, uh, her torso, and she dies right there. Very graphic scene, and I was mad, because you guys know, I want more Captain Carter. You know, I loved Captain Carter in What If. I'm glad we got her for a couple minutes in this film. But, still, I want more. I want a Captain Carter in Disney Plus show. I want Captain Carter in the main MCU. Like, give me more Captain Carter. Haley Atwell is one of my favorite actresses, and she's just great. I, I love finally getting to see her in the suit in this film. I just wish we got a little bit more and you didn't get killed so easily. But, you know, it, uh, it is what it is. That was really it for the big cameos. Really. I can't really think of other ones, but for the most part, those were the big cameos in this film. 
uh, we we did talk about how Doctor Strange does face str- uh, Sinister Strange, right? Things are getting out of hand. We, you know, we did talk about that, and I love their battle, right? When they're fighting with the music notes uh, and everything, that's awesome. But, uh, but I did find it funny how sh- in in this movie, Sinister Strange doesn't learn his lesson. He clearly didn't learn his lesson from What If, right? He still, he tries to convince uh MCU Doctor Strange. You know, give me your Christine, and I will give you the Dark Hole, right? Uh, and I'm and I'm like, dude, like, your addiction with Christine and trying to find your own happiness destroyed your whole universe. Like, what are you doing? What? Uh, but yeah, I forgot what I was saying. But yeah, I find it funny how Sinister Strange still didn't learn his lesson. He didn't learn his lesson, and he ends up getting himself spiked on uh, uh, what's it called? Those gate things. He got spiked on one of those sharp points on a gate outside of the sanctum, and I'm just like, damn. You know, you thought he would have learned his lesson from what if, but one of the coolest moments of this film was uh seeing uh. Doctor Strange, uh, dream walk, right? He dream walks, uh, using the dark hole to possess a corpse of Supreme Strange from another universe. Who's, you know, the body, his body's like decomposing and everything like that. Uh, but you know, he, he takes over that corpse, uh, so that he can, uh, fight Wanda. And that was really, really cool. You know, I love how he tells Christine, like, yes, all of us Doctor Strange are the same. Just know, uh, you know, protect me uh, once I go under because I'm. It's gonna be hard for me to control myself. And I love how Christine's helping him fight off the the dark spirits from the dam, right from the book of the dam, and then how he controls those spirits, and then he's able to unleash that power on Wanda, and you know, and then then American Chavez comes in and gets the victory. But really, really cool stuff here. Um. Near the end, right? Like I said, we already talked about how, you know, Doctor Strange's character arc, it has similarities to Iron Man's when you think of it, right? Both characters are arrogant uh, in a way. Uh, but, of course, as time goes on, Iron Man becomes selfless. Even though he does make mistakes, he learns from those mistakes, and uh, he becomes very selfless. And then, you know, he cares about his family, and then he, he makes the ultimate sacrifice. It kind of feels like they're putting Doctor Strange kind of on that route as well. We know that, you know, Strange is trying to find happiness, you know, and he's not there yet, but he hopes to get there sooner rather than later. And uh, near the end here, right, we know that uh, Strange will be back, and I, I'm on the back. He's going to probably sign a new contract soon with, with Marvel, and then, you know, who get in their movie. We'll have Avengers 5 and all that good stuff, you know. Uh, the big thing here, right? We already talked about Wanda. If you guys didn't see the post credit scene, there was two of them, but there was only one that mattered, and it was the first one. It was the mid credit scene. So, uh, near the end, at the end of the film, we see Strange, he's walking out, he's walking in New York, and all of a sudden, his eye opens up, right? And then he's just, he's screaming in pain. He's in, he's in a bunch of pain, right? And we can see he has that third eye from the dark hole. We don't really know why. We don't really know what it means. But we just know he has it. Could be a good thing. Could be something to watch for. We just know that he has that third eye now. Right? But um, we see uh, Charlize Theron. I, I know I'm saying her, her name incorrectly. But she shows up at the uh, end of the credit scene. And she opens up a portal right, and then uh, she basically tells Strange, like, hey, you know, come with this journey to me, and it's basically going into another universe, she's like, you need, you know, you made this problem, now you're gonna have to help me fix it, unless you're afraid, but, you know, uh, Strange says, uh, Strange says, uh, uh, I I forget, no, 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 because earlier in the film, Strange was talking to Christine Parber, right, and Christine told Strange to face his fears. 
And Strange, you know, even though he is kind of scared, he says, you know, let's do it. You know, he goes in there. And this is, you know, this is most likely Clay or Clee. I, I, I'm terrible at pronouncing names, but uh, Clay, Clee, whatever, you know, uh, she is, uh, she's wearing a purple and black costume. And, you know, if you read the MCU comics, or not the MCU, the Marvel comics, you should be able to recognize her, right? So, she's a very powerful sorceress who appears to be human, but she's part of the flatline race, right? And uh, she has extra dimensional energy, uh, and she's born from uh, pure magic, right? She's the niece of Dormammu, and remember, Strange actually defeats uh, Dormammu in the first uh, Doctor Strange movie. Uh... Clay is also the Sorceress Supreme of the Dark Dimension, right? So, she has cool powers like telekinesis, mind control, teleporting, super strength, etc., etc. In some of the comics, she is a wife to Strange. You know, for the most part, they do have a good relationship. There's some comics, if you read them, where uh, Strange has actually entrusted uh, Clay uh, with the protection of the Earth. So, definitely, I think if this is setting up for Doctor Strange 3... Right, I can definitely see Clay being set up to be Strange's new love interest if they choose to go down that route. Right, maybe or maybe they'll have a friendly relationship, or who knows? Maybe they could be setting up Clay to secretly be a villain of a future film. Who knows? But you know, it does show that Doctor Strange's future in the MCU is bright, and there's still a lot left for him to do. Way more stories and more adventures to tell with him going forward but yeah uh, so yeah definitely you know going to avengers 5 we know dr strange will have a huge role and there's going to be tons of other characters and things of that nature my my only two big criticisms with this film is uh i wish it was longer i wish there was more madness i wish it was more cameras you know because that's really was one of the big selling points of this film it still was a really good film you know no lies at all, but still, that was just that was a little bit of my disappointment with it. But other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys thought of the film in the comment section down below. Um, hope you guys enjoyed my little rambling podcast here. If you guys did, leave a like on the video, uh, subscribe uh, to the channel by hitting the big red button and by clicking the bell next to my name, Facebook TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video. Thank you guys for the love and support. As always, I will be back with some more MCU content coming very, very soon. Thank you guys as always. I'll see you all later. Peace.